Hi guys, my name is Rob from Vision PD. Welcome to our channel. This one's been a long time in the making. Seasons have come and seasons have gone and we're going to leave it again now until next summer while we construct the flats inside the main building. We added a workshop in the middle, changed the design several times, dipped in and out of the... Sorry? Rambling? Our garden transformation, part one, let's get to it. In this video, we will be sorting out the collapsed verge and constructing a retaining wall, laying the hardcore base, deciding to add a workshop and therefore digging the hardcore base back up, building our fence. So basically we'll be doing all the hard work this year so we can do all the pretty bits next year. I wanted to keep the upright concrete post to strengthen the fence we'll make later on, so I needed to be careful to remove the other beams so we can fit the gabions over them. I was ready for this telephone pole to come falling down if I was careless with the digger, or if luck was not on my side. That budly may have saved the day with its roots keeping the landslide at bay. We decided to go with gabions for the retaining wall, as although it's not necessary all the way down our border, it will keep the section that needs holding back much better than any block work and will look great at the same time. Use cheap stone for the parts you'll not see and your favourite for the front to save some money. After having it go on the first few, I realised it's important not to overfill them as they might bulge, but I was also worried about underfilling them, so I added some wire to the middle tying the front to the back to prevent it losing its shape. Make sure you twist the sharp cut ends away from the front as you don't want to catch your chinos on them while you're enjoying your Sunday barbecues. A little planning now goes a long 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 way. You'll see why these tubes will come in handy later. If you ever thought about not wearing your safety glasses when using a grinder, there's enough tingle in it catching your hair. Yeah, I know it seems like unnecessary work. We try to get all the digger jobs done in our garden first as we've moved up to the main parking area now and cannot get any machinery down here anymore. Plus, digging is good for the character, especially when you made sure you did a really good job compacting it first. At least I was able to use it to backfill the collapsed verge. This chap died halfway through the build, that's the cement mixer, so we had to mix by hand from now on, which made clearing up a little easier. Although we'll be constructing the workshop out of high quality materials to ensure it will take the weight of the machinery, those footings are not suitable for any other type of structure, so you'll have to check the regulations if you need to meet them. One of the reasons we're using such massive blocks is because the rear part will be acting as a retaining wall to the main parking area and will need to withstand those forces. They also give us a better footing for the beam floor system we'll be using. See if you can spot the bumblebee running around on the floor, bottom right. There he goes, middle left on the block. Oh no! Phew, invincibee. I have to say, I love the multitude of toys I get to play with doing the work I do. I didn't love how incredibly heavy these beams are.
There are bits of concrete snot where these blocks will be sitting. It's best to knock these off now rather than have the blocks break when you put any weight on them later. We choose insulated blocks as they are a little cheaper and will not be adding any further insulation as it's basically a glorified garage. The idea with this construction method is to lay a screen on top of the blocks to finish the floor. We'll be leaving that until the roof goes on next year so that the rainwater will have somewhere to go in the meantime. The colour palette we've chosen for the garden is dark blue and beige, so we've chosen to build the workshop out of blue engineering brick to match the gabion stone. But I wanted a dark mortar, so we're adding this black pigment to knock the edge off that yellow sand. So yes, I know this does look a mess. I'm not good enough for brickwork to get it looking tidy when I lay the bricks, so I have to let it set and then you can sort of scrape, scrape the sand off and luckily we're using a dark mortar which means that it doesn't leave too many stains on the brickwork, but um, I mean this is the best way I've found to do it. I've got a little raking tool here that we just used to rake the mortar out, It's quite a nice effect at the end. And if you're wondering why we've carpeted the underneath of the decking, it's because it's the best weed suppressor out there. I should reiterate that I'm not all that proficient at brickwork. In fact, this is my first time laying bricks that anyone will actually see, but I was not willing to pay anyone else to do it. And it was a good opportunity to practice on something that only I will see. It's funny because the bottom lays suck, but it gets progressively better the higher up the building you look. Travis Perkins had a little laugh when I placed the order for this single special order brick. I guess most builders order more than one. Came nicer wrap though. I know it can be super confusing trying to watch the video and get a sense of the layout. Certainly with all the rubble piles kind of blending together. So we'll go over what we actually have here, where the bits go. Uh, we might have split this into a few videos, so perhaps an explanation now might be good. This is where our garden starts. This is going to be the back gate into it. And this is going to be our workshop. So the reason we're doing finished brickwork on this side is because we're going to see it. The block work here is going to have some fence panels on the back to match the fence, the new fence that we're going to be doing over here. So that's why we're not too concerned about the finish of the block work. And the internal skin, again, we're going to be covering that up. So we're just making a bit of a mess, make it nice and strong. But this side is the one we're going to see. Path, we're probably going to build this up to be level because I can anticipate getting stuff into the workshop being a bit of a pain in the ass if we've got a slope to lift big table saws up and stuff all the way down here. This is the edge of the actual workshop. You can see the door, where the doorway is going to go here. There's no other windows or anything. We're just going to have a big bifold door here, which is going to give us access to what was going to be our decking. Um, so it was going to be timber. It was going to be timber because we like the soft, soft texture of, of wood, but we ended up having loads of these spare beams for the beam and block flooring, which we couldn't return. And here was a really good place to do it. So actually this is now going to be a raised gravel lock section to match the patio area over there. Same sort of height, entry here. We're gonna have a nice pergola over the top here to create a bit of a sheltered barbecue dining area outside the workshop. Workshop's gonna be tidy, so it's gonna be a nice place to be, not skanky workshop. And then over here to the patio. So I'm hoping this is going to make a little bit of sense. We've got the raised gravel lock area just there in the workshop over here. This is our border with the gabions that you've seen us make over there. And then that massive rubble is going to be, so we'll, we'll go over that in a section. We're going to have a fire pit somewhere sensible in the, in the center here. We're keeping our, our trees so that we can make some platforms for them over there. That's going to be it's going to be where we locate those. We're going to have some block paving edging all the way around here. 
a couple of chairs, a couple of potted plants, and then that. So we want to still be able to see our living wall here, whilst at the same time creating a little bit of privacy between us and, um, well, the, the meter box. So this is going to be a wall feature. We're going to build back up slightly higher than the front, and we've got some leftover stone that you can see in the gabions, um, the blue stone. Going to be putting a gradient towards this side, filling it with rocks, and then having the water pump from the back to the front to create a nice trickling noise. And we're going to have some platforms dotted around in the center to put our trees. They're not bonsai, but in a bonsai kind of style. I should mention, I do level this out later. You might be looking at this and wondering, yeah, I get the decorative brickwork over there, but it's a bit odd really, isn't it? See, this is where the barbecue is going. getting a higher barbecue. I don't know if you're all noticing a common theme in my videos, but I always believe you should put a little more work in now to make the job last longer. Partly because it's the right thing to do, but mainly because I absolutely hate revisiting a job I believe to be finished. Here I'm painting the bottom of the fence posts where they'll be set in cement to slow down the rotting process. We also went with oak posts as they aren't any more expensive if you know where to get them, and they should last longer. so that we could fit the fence posts into the middle of the gabions, what we did is we sunk these drainage, pi drainage pipes into the middle of the gabions as we went along, spaced it, spaced it all the way down. Um, that means we can put the fence posts inside the pipes, which gives them, if you like, it keeps them straight. Otherwise, if we just sunk them into the stones, we'd have a hard time keeping them upright. And then what we're going to do is backfill the pipes with some postcrete that should give the bottom a bit more weight and also keep them where we want them safe and wobbling around like this. And uh, it should be okay. If there's not enough support in this direction, then we'll add some, some further supports that will spike back into the verge and screw to the sides just to prevent it from blowing this way. But I mean, they seem, they seem sturdy enough, or at least the bottom seems sturdy enough at the minute, but we'll have to see how that goes. No, this isn't the junkiest fencing you've ever seen. These are the supports to keep the posts upright while I set them in properly. The pipes are really tight on the posts, so I had to make this little funnel to make sure the post creep went where I wanted it. The stone is so good when it's wet, 
Luckily, it rains a lot in England, so it should look like this most of the time. So this stuff is phenomenal. It's expensive, so I wouldn't use it everywhere, but when you have a critical job, this is the product to use. We'll be adding metal hose ties to provide a second line of defense, but if you were wondering how strong the adhesive is on its own, just keep watching. There are no screws here, only the adhesive. Even I wasn't expected to be this strong. So I spent a lot of time thinking about this. The gabions are at a slight slope, not a lot, but enough to look off if the fence was level. So do I cut each piece at an angle or square? I decided to go square as the angle was less than one degree. I set a piece of wood every few meters the same height above the gabions to match the slope and use that straight edge to keep me on track. So while we're doing the fence, I thought it'd be a good opportunity to go over why we spent all this time cutting the bottoms at 45 degrees. It's to do with waterproofing. So when this gets wet, the water will run down towards the bottom of the piece of timber. And if it was a flat cut, the water would hit the bottom and it would wick across and end up soaking up the bottom of the piece of timber. By cutting it at a 45 degree angle, gives it a nice sharp point for the water to drip off. And although it does still wick up a little bit, it's certainly not as much. Now, why is this a problem? Well, if this piece of timber was in the orientation it was when it was in the tree originally, it would be like this and trees are designed to soak water via capillary action from their roots up to their leaves, which means that water is designed to flow through timber. And if you look at the end of a piece of end grain, you can actually see the tiny little holes where the water would soak up. So if the bottom's getting wet a lot, timber's designed to pull the water up, it draws it through, which means you'll get the bottom few inches starting to rot before the rest of it. So by cutting it at 45 degree angle, you save yourself a lot of headache and you won't have to replace it quite as quickly. We did the same 45 degree cuts on both the top of the door and you can't see it here, but on the bottom of the cladding. And this has been here three or four years. And if you have a look at the underside of these cut surfaces, not all of it, but an awful lot of it looks like it's just been freshly cut. It doesn't even look like it's aged. We went with softwood for the panels to match the cladding on our flat. And because we went with hardwood posts, I'm hoping that when the time comes, we will only have to replace the panels and not the posts. The final job is to clean up the brickwork. The wire brush removes any sand leaving the cement stains behind. Using a sponge in a dabbing motion will prevent the acid eating away the pointing, but will get a good covering on the face of the brick. We had to do this three times to get a clean face. That's it for the garden video for this year. Gonna leave it while the winter comes in. You need to be getting on with some other things in the flats, but this is the kind of content you like. Subscribe. If you've got any questions from us about the work we do, or perhaps you've got some tips for us, maybe some products we could use or some better methods we could try out, let us know in the comments. I suppose I should get on with building some flats. Go start with number 12. Although I've got the drainage to put in first. That'll be okay, that won't take too long. I've got the hinge lation arriving pretty soon. Got that utility channel I need to put in the ceiling though. Gotta make sure that lines up with flats above. Make sure I can separate that off. But then we've got the staircase coming in soon, which we're probably gonna have to fill with cement. It'll be alright.